Etched in stone in the rotunda of the Capitol are the words, here, sir, the people govern. Those words were spoken by Alexander Hamilton when he asked what Congress represented. To the framers of the Constitution, the Congress was the first branch of government, the place where the people's representatives met to decide the people's business. Yet, when the Constitution was unveiled, many leading Americans were outraged. One of them was Richard Henry Lee of Virginia, who had been president of the Continental Congress during the Revolutionary War. Richard Henry Lee said, this Constitution has very little democracy in it. What he was objecting to was the fact that the people were not allowed to vote for the president or for members of the Senate. Only the House of Representatives would be chosen by vote of the people. When Henry Clay of Kentucky, one of the great legislators of the 19th century, left the Senate to run for the House, he said, I prefer to serve in the people's chamber. Some critics today wonder whether that label still applies to the House. They point to House elections, which have become increasingly expensive. It was not that long ago that these were relatively modest affairs, funded largely by donations from people living in the district. Today, it's easily the case that a House election can cost a million dollars or more, with much of that money coming from wealthy individuals and groups from outside the district. Critics also point to redistricting, the tendency of state legislatures to pack House districts with voters from a particular party, thereby guaranteeing the election of that party's candidate in the fall. So who's doing the electing? Is it the voters or is it the state legislatures and the wealthy donors? Those kinds of issues about self-government have been part of the American debate since the writing of the Constitution.